this is Florian from Tennis Tutor and today I'm gonna practice serves and my goal is first of all to have like a 80 to 90 percent consistency with my ball toss second I want to have like more than 60 percent into the box and I also want to load my body more because um, I think I can get more impact of the ball more momentum of the ball forward and so I want the ball to hit the back fence that would be uh, a serve with a great, with 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 uh, with a good good enough momentum. All right, let's go. Hello everyone, Florian again from Tennis Tutin. And um, today you've seen a sequence of 
normal serves as I always do them. And then a sequence of serves where I tried to load my body more. Uh, something interesting ended up happening. I kept my tossing arm up longer. So the central problem I want to solve with my, sorry, my serve right now is that my racket drop isn't really deep. And I want to get a deeper racket drop. And so I thought one way of doing that, getting a deeper racket drop and also getting more momentum on my serve, is to um, load more before the trophy position. There are several main movements in the beginning. Um, first, you toss the ball and you coil, and then you uncoil, have the racket drop, and move into the into the into into hitting the ball. Now, what I observed is basically very fascinating. That when the tossing arm drops, your racket also drops. Those two movements are connected. If you have in a, in a, in a, in a trophy position, the tossing arm is up, and then you go down your racket will also drop down. So if I drop the tossing arm before I go into the uncoiling movement and rotate into the ball, um, then I will have a very static racket drop. Uh, the racket drop is there, then I coil, I come out of the drop. However, if I keep my racket and my tossing arm up for a longer while, and start uncoiling while my tossing arm is still up, then my racket drop will be more dynamic and also probably deeper. Because the movement has already started and then the racket drops while I uncoil and that will tuck the racket a little bit deeper. It's similar to the wrist lag on the forehand when you start rotating your torso while you're, while you're um, racket arm hasn't completely dropped yet, then you induce an automatic wrist lag because your torso is rotating and the, basically the hand is passively following at that point. I think the same is true for the racket drop in the serve. When I start rotating, uncoiling, and then do the racket drop, it gets passively stretched down and then I can explode from that down position. So. Um, that's what I ended up trying to do. And if you look at the video, you can see that, yeah, indeed, my serves have a little bit more momentum forward also. Uh, I wanted to load my body more also. That hasn't worked out very well. Um, so instead, I'll try to, in the, in the future, I'll try to uh, integrate a longer, uh, a longer tossing arm, like leave the tossing arm longer up. I try to integrate that into my general movement and see whether I can make the uh, serve go faster. Very excited about that, actually. A good measure of the momentum is when the ball is actually hitting the back fence. And the court that I used had like a little bit larger distance as usual to the ground line with the back fence. So whenever a ball is basically going uh, bouncing first into the tee box and then bouncing very close to the bottom of the back fence that is sort of like that would be like a normal back fence when it hits it like one foot or something like that so i'm quite happy with the change i had when i kept my tossing arm up longer and um, i'm just going to do more of that in the future so um, thanks for listening um, if you like this video like the video and subscribe to my channel so you get all the updates and tell your friends, family, significant other. And um, uh, yeah, thanks for your help and uh, see you next day. Take care.